What if I told you that the protein in your liver, one that's never supposed to be in your brain, could be secretly driving Alzheimer's disease in us, A4 carriers, and that after 20 years of research, we finally have a drug in human trials that could stop it. Today's revelation from the AIC, the Alzheimer's Association International Conference, will fundamentally change how we think about protecting our brain and our liver. I am Dr. Kevin Tran. I'm a doctor of pharmacy and an APOE 44 carriers. I'm also the founder of the Phoenix Community, which is a platform dedicated to helping APOE 4 carriers beat the odds and outsmart Alzheimer's. Through my personal journey, with APOE4, I dive deep into the latest research and translate complex findings into hopefully clear and actionable insights that we can all apply today to take control of our brain health. And today, we're diving into groundbreaking presentations from the Monday plenary session from the AIC that reveal completely different but equally revolutionary approaches to stopping neurodegeneration. We have Dr. Katrina Akasoglu from UCSF, who will show us how a blood clotting protein becomes a brain destroyer when our blood-brain barrier, that's BBB for short, the protective wall between our blood and brain that's normally tight as a drum, well, when it starts leaking. What makes these findings especially relevant for us carriers is that we have mentioned specifically in Dr. Akasoglu's research. Fibrin deposits are increased in APOE4 carriers, though the study doesn't specify whether that's heterozygotes with one copy or homozygotes like me with two copies. But regardless of which group we are in, what you are about to learn could change everything about how we approach our brain health. Let me start with a question that Dr. Akasoglu has been asking for over 20 years, and it's one that should matter to every APOE4 carriers. A driving question in my research is whether blood proteins can be drivers causal to neurodegeneration. And indeed, fibrinogen is not present in the normal brain. It's a liver protein, it's a coagulation factor uh, produced in the liver, and it requires a leak of the blood-brain barrier or a vascular alteration to find access into the brain parenchyma. Think about that for a moment. Fibrinogen, a protein that helps our blood clot when we get a cut, is never supposed to be in our brain. It's a massive molecule normally kept out by our blood-brain barrier. But when our BBB starts breaking down, which happens more frequently and earlier in our sepoy for carriers due to our compromised vascular health, while well, this protein sneaks in and transforms into something called fibrin through the coagulation cascade. And that's where the trouble begins. The evidence that this matters for our cognitive future is compelling and measurable with tests available today. CSF fibrinogen is associated with increased risk and progression of AD and is also increased in subjects with mild cognitive impairment and has been proposed as a predictive biomarker for dementia risk. Fibrinogen also correlates with neurodegeneration markers like phosphotau, as well as also soluble PDGF receptor beta, a marker for pericytes that is associated with blood-brain barrier dysfunction. So we can actually measure this in the cerebrospinal fluid that's the CSF, which is the fluid surrounding our brain and spinal cord obtained through a lumbar puncture. And it predicts who's headed towards dementia and who is not. These CSF tests are becoming more available at major labs through their not yet routine. But here's what makes Dr. Akasoglu's work revolutionary. She didn't just identify the problem because we wouldn't care that much. She figured out exactly how fibrin hijacks our brain's immune system at the molecular level. So what I noticed was that fibrin has a second domain, an inflammatory domain, the 377395, that binds to the CD11BI domain of complement receptor 3, which of course we know is expressed on microglia and macrophages and is a critical player in inflammation. Is it possible that when this protein finds access into the brain, could it be hijacking these immune receptors on the brain's immune cells? So this discovery revealed fibrin's dual nature. It has both a coagulation domain, which is the part that forms the blood clots, and a complete separate inflammation domain. It's like a Swiss army knife with two different tools. The inflammation domain specifically binds to CD11B and CD18, also known as complement receptor 3 or MAC1, our microglia, 
turning our brains, normally protective immune cells, into weapons of destruction. This discovery led to an ingenious experiment. Working with collaborators, they created mice with a specific mutation that prevented fibrin from activating inflammation, but still allowed normal blood clotting, because you still need that. In 2007, in collaboration with Jay Diggin at the University of Cincinnati, he had developed a, a Nokin mouse where it had a seven amino acid mutation only within the inflammatory domain. So these mice could clot just like wild type mice, but fibrin could not activate the immune system. We found uh, that uh, these mice were protected in animal models of multiple sclerosis, as well as also Alzheimer's disease. That was the proof they needed. You could block fibrin's inflammatory effect without affecting its normal job in blood clotting. These fibrinogen gamma 377384A mice became a powerful tool to dissect the specific role of fibrin-driven inflammation across multiple neurological diseases. But the discoveries didn't stop there. Dr. Akasoglu's team found that fibrin causes damage through multiple pathways, and importantly, these are completely independent of amyloid plaques. What we found was that uh, fibrin in the uh, AD uh, mice was a new site, amyloid independent, for synapse loss and uh, spine elimination. When we crossed the 5XFAD mouse uh, with the fibrinogen mutant, we found a reduction of the neurodegenerative and oxidative stress genes in mice. Microglia, while there was a restoration of the homeostatic protective signature in these cells. This is crucial for us to understand. Fibrin destroys synapses. Those are the vital connections between neurons that allow them to communicate with each other through a completely different pathway than amyloid. The 5X FAD mice they used carry five different Alzheimer's mutations that accelerates amyloid production, yet blocking fibrin still provided protection. It's like having two separate fires burning in our brains. And we've been focused on putting out only one of them while all the others rages unchecked. But perhaps the most striking finding relates to something many of us carriers experience. That feeling of mental fog or overstimulation, what researchers call network hyperexcitability. Dr. Akasoglu's teams discovered that fibrin actually causes our neurons to become hyperactive. So to test this experimentally, we performed simultaneous two photon imaging of microglia and neuronal activity. And here you can see increased hyperactive neurons in the 5 x AD mice correlating with increased hyperexcitability in AD. But when we superimpose the fibrin mutation and we block the fibrin activation of microglia, there is protection from hyperactivity in the AD mice. And this was associated with the restoration of microglia contacts with neurons. When the microglia, which is our brain's immune cells that normally prune excess synapses and maintain neuronal health, when these microglia are activated by fibrin, they pull away from our neurons, retracting their processes that normally make hundreds of contacts with each neurons. Without this regulation, neurons fire incontrollably. It's like removing the brakes from a car going downhill. Block fibrin and the microglia return to their protective surveillance role, extending their processes back to neurons and restoring normal activity patterns. So these are exactly the kind of breakthroughs research we discuss in the Phoenix community, where APOE4 carriers from around the world share strategies and support each other through this journey. Understanding these mechanisms help us make informed decisions about our health interventions, from managing vascular risk factors to choosing appropriate supplements. If you're interested to join us, you can apply using the link in the description below. Now here's where Dr. Akasoglu's research transforms from fascinating science to real hope for his carrier. They've developed a drug called THN391, currently being developed by Terini Bio. Terini391 uh, is a first-in-class therapeutic monoclonal antibody designed to selectively neutralize uh, neurotoxic effects of fibrin and is currently in trials in Alzheimer's disease. The antibody is uh, highly selective with a thousand-fold selectivity for fibrin versus fibrinogen and has been affinity matured uh, to have subnanomolar binding to the fibrin epitope. That thousand-fold selectivity is critical. It means the drug targets only the harmful insoluble fibrin deposits in our brain, not the soluble fibrinogen circulating in our blood that we need for normal clotting. Otherwise, you would basically bleed out. The entire body achieves this by recognizing a cryptic epitope 
which is a binding site that's hidden in normal fibrinogen, but becomes exposed when it converts to pathogenic fibrin. And the safety data from the phase one trial is remarkably keen. The in 391 uh, has a demonstrated safety in a completed now phase one study. This was done in healthy volunteers, uh, 80 uh, subjects with the administration of the antibody at doses up to 40 milligram per kilogram in both single ascending and multiple ascending dose. The antibody was safe and well tolerated with no clinically significant changes and uh, no effects on coagulation and fibrinolysis as measured in a battery uh, of tests. So no effects on blood clotting, that's huge. Unlike the anti-amyloid drugs that can cause areas, which as a reminder, those are the amyloid-related imaging abnormalities, essentially brain swelling and microbleeds that occur in up to 40% of patients on some treatments, especially in the for carriers, while THN 391 appears remarkably safe. The antibody has a 40-day half-life, meaning it could be dosed monthly or even less frequently, making it practical for long-term treatment. And here's something that should excite every carrier who's been told they might not qualify for current treatments. Uh, a phase 1b study of Therini 391 in Alzheimer's disease is currently ongoing. Uh, this is narrowly Alzheimer's uh, patients with confirmed uh, amyloid testing. Uh, the study includes populations with vascular risk factors. This may otherwise have not been eligible uh, for anti-amyloid therapies. So if you have high blood pressures, diabetes, or other vascular issues, which are conditions that affect around 70% of APOE for carriers, you might still qualify for this treatment. That's a game changer for many of us who have been excluded from anti-amyloid trials due to area risk. But how much of the brain inflammatory response is actually driven by fibrinogen, while the answer surprised even the researchers. When we performed the same experiment, but now we exposed microglia to plasma from a fibrinogen knockout mouse, this has all the blood proteins except fibrinogen, there was a 97% down regulation of these uh, genes, 55% were statistically significant, suggesting that fibrinogen is a key protein in the blood inducing microglia activation. 97%. Almost all of the blood-induced inflammation in our brain comes from this one protein. When they analyzed the blood-brain innate immunity multi-omics pipeline, they found fibrinogen uniquely drives neurodegenerative gene signatures in microglia. And it's not just causing inflammation, it's actively blocking our brain's ability to repair itself. I also want to remind you that this is a key uh, pathway also involving inhibition of neuroripair. We had shown that fibrin inhibits remyelination after vascular damage. The title of this is being a bloody break on myelin repair. And the take-home message I want to leave with you today was that this is a bloody break on repair and this pathway is a gas pedal uh, for toxic uh, inflammation. So a break on repair and a gas pedal for inflammation. That's the dual disaster fibrin creates in our brain. Fibrin blocks oligodendrocytes progenitor cells from maturing, producing new myelin, the insulation around our nerve fibers that's essential for proper signal transmission. For us, APOE for carriers who already have compromised myelin maintenance, this double hit could be particularly devastating. But here's the profound insight that ties everything together. In a commentary we contributed last year to the uh, 50th uh, anniversary uh, neuroscience issue of cell, we discussed uh, that uh, toxic fibrinization in the brain is a point of convergence for this multitude of risk factors, regardless of the initial trigger compromising the blood-brain barrier. And uh, as a result, fibrin then can be a common thread for these pathogenic mechanisms across diseases with different etiologies and uh, a common therapeutic target. Whether it's aging, hypertension, viral infections like COVID-19, traumatic brain injury, or our APOE4 status, they all converge on this single mechanism by compromising the blood-brain barrier. Fix the fibrin problem and we might address multiple risk factors at once. This is particularly relevant now as Dr. Akasoglu's team has shown fibrin is a hallmark of COVID-19 neuropathology, potentially explaining the long COVID brain fog. If you are finding this research as revolutionary as I am, please subscribe to this channel. Every week I break down the latest breakthrough that matters to us APOE for carriers and I turn complex science into actionable insights. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss our next deep dive.